in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint this fantastic paint with just dry brushing and contrast paints in a couple of minutes. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. We are covering this super cool Mars basing scheme. If I pull him off and get a nice close up here. It looks fantastic, very easily done. Dry brushing, contrast paints used as a wash interestingly, and it's a really good way to set your miniature in kind of a warm environment, which is appropriate because it's hot in the sun in the UK at the moment. That's why I'm in the best. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can base your models. You can base them for cohesion or you can base them for contrast. If you put a warm model on this base in terms of its color scheme, then it will look like it's in its home environment. And if you put a cool model, like a cool blue steel or something like that, like the Necrons we've done recently, you drop it in, it'll look like it's in an alien environment. So it doesn't matter, Not one's not right, one's not wrong, but it's the type of thing I like to think of when I'm choosing the basing scheme for my models. This is massively efficient, it's super effective, it's really fun to do, and if you've got like 50 models to base for an army or one model and you want to like go crazy with the tufts and the skulls and the details or put some kind of oil, oil washes or anything on there or some pigments, it's a really, really good starting foundation. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so our base coat is a mix of Mephiston Red and Doomball Brown. Obviously we are going for the warmest mix possible here, so we don't need much Mephiston Red because it's a super strong colour. And what we're going to be doing here is a very unsubtle blobby stipple base coat. I'm trying to keep it on the top, but it doesn't really matter if it gets to the edge. The important thing is though to make sure it gets at least to the very edge. We're just going to bring up the tone a little bit with something slightly brighter. So we've got here Tau Light Ochre. And then, which has seen some better days apparently. There we go. So it's drying a little, but not too much. So the areas that are the ones where we want to be a little bit brighter, I'm just going to pick some random spots here. You could pick the raised areas. I often do that. But there are other ones, but I'm just going to pick some blobs. Do that. Wet our brush. And then quickly put our neutral brush around the edges of that just to make it a little bit more subtle. There you can see, amazing how fast that goes. Now we are going to let that dry and then we'll move on to the dry brushing. All right, so we've got our small here from Series D and we're going to be picking up a little bit of the Doom Ball, but not too much, and a heavy amount of the Tally Ochre, which I've given a proper shake at this point. Work off the excess, then we're going to start to build up some texture here. And basically we're just going to repeat this step, adding more of the towel light ochre until we phase into something else. So we're pretty much already up to the pure towel light ochre. Now we can add in a little bit of a bone color. So I'm going to use Screaming Skull here. Sticking with Citadel, you could use any colors that are similar to this though. It's far more important the method rather than the exact colors you use. Obviously everyone's got their favorites. Go to my dampening pad. I'm going to mix this in a fair bit because I want to be pulling the previous color through. And then take another one, which is a bit, there's a bit more on this brush. Not too much, but there's a bit more. And I'm gonna use this to really pick up those edges. So really starting the, the detail is kind of popping now, far more than it was. Obviously, if you put your paint on thick and you've got bigger sections, you can have a, a far more obvious, kind of highly contrasted result. So for a wash, we're using the Contrast Flesh Terrors Red. My favorite contrast, we're still using the same slightly sad, abused, aged brush that we used for our wet blending in the first coats. And I'm basically gonna mix Flesh Terrors with a little bit of our Doom Ball on the palette and some water. And then this is just gonna be used all over. Okay, so now it's dried. I'm going to go back to our Tau Light Ochre, which is 
of course going to appear to be pretty bright against what we've uh, just put down. Grab a little bit of our contrast to counter that and make it a bit more subtle. Quickly go over it with that coat and then go for a almost entirely neat coat. Obviously we've got our previous layers in the brush but it's going to allow it to come back up. And then quickly take our bone a little, little more in there. So there we've got quite a degree of depth on show. Super fast, super efficient, and you can play around with all of these techniques as much as you want. So if you want a thinner coat of the contrast or you don't want the coat of the contrast at all, you can go for that. Um, if you just want to use kind of contrast as a really, over really powerfully um, contrasted base coat, which has gone to white or something, then it will punch through a bit more. And if you don't want it to be as sandy as this one, you can keep a high degree of red in or maybe even highlight it with an orange, like a Troll Slayer or Fire Dragon Bright maybe even. So that is pretty much perfect. All that remains is to stick a couple of tufts on and then we're good to go. So in my opinion, there is only one correct color for base rims and that is black. So we're just gonna be swiftly hitting that. Now this is why I said it was really important to go to the the rim of your base with all of your previous steps. It looks strange if you've got this nice black border and that doesn't go right to the end of where your painting was. If you've got kind of a weird fade out of your top detail and then you transition into your, your black base rim, it just doesn't look nearly as good. Whereas if it goes right to the very edge, you end up with that lovely crisp distinction between one part and the other. Okay, so we've got some of the Highland Tough from Army Painter here. It would look fantastic if there was a skull on this base, so I might actually sneak one on at some point in a future date. But um, yeah, we've got the Little Tough tier. Top tip for these, I really like the effect. If you're gonna put them against a rock, which looks a little bit more natural, just run a knife through the middle of them, press down hard, and then you get half of a tuft. And that's really useful for being able to back up the flat side pull off any excess. So I'm going to be able to back up the flat side of that here. And we can have it coming out at a nice organic looking angle. I'll put on another tuft and then we are good. All right, he got a skull because we're in the Games Workshop world here. So that is the base. Let's pull him off. I always like to have the figure on if possible when deciding where my tufts go. So for example, this one's being kind of squished under his raised back foot. There is our base, which has turned out beautifully. All right, super fast, super easy, super forgiving. Not any uh, kind of technical skills needed whatsoever. Just make sure you've got the right amount of stuff on the brush. And if anything goes wrong, you cover it with a tuft. So what more could you need? All right, the finished article. I love this. Look at that, it's just super effective. What a large amount of kind of contrast and interest to get on a base, which is for all intents and purposes, apart from the skull and the tuft, pretty much completely flat not hard work it's a doddle and it looks great so what's not to like about it especially when it's got a skull on top so um if you want to adapt that method at all if you want to drop in some more paint you want to make it more orange more warm more vibrant um more saturated use some kind of colored ink like super colorful inks in there or anything like that then go for it all of our tutorials are kind of a foundation for you to adapt and customize to whatever you want to do. If you've got any questions about how we change it in one way or the other, please let us know. Please check out our other basing videos using exactly the same foundation in terms of the texture paint. And then we're going for a cool finish. And uh, it's like, they're both basically the same tutorial, but you just swap four paints around. Um, super pleased with how it looks. I would absolutely love to do an army in this scheme. That's kind of how we approach a lot of the fast tutorials that we do. Is it practical to paint an army fast in this way? Yes, it definitely is, and it'd look amazing. So thank you very much. Please give the video a like, please subscribe, hit that bell notification to be notified for future content. We've got some amazing stuff coming up, and I'll catch you in the next video.